Look at that. All right, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Let me know. Let me know in the chat if you can hear me. You should be seeing a screen. You should be seeing a white screen that says Stop Barking Masterclass in Blue. Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see the screen. And wow, thank you so much for being here. We are live on YouTube. And this is our, uh, I'm hosting, I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher, the Furry Family Coach, and this is our Stop Barking Masterclass. Guys, this is not your usual course or class. These are entirely different techniques. So if you've learned techniques before and they did not work, don't worry. This is what you've been looking for. And before I get too far into uh, this presentation, I have my wonderful husband, JR, with me, who is going to be helping me out. JR, would you like to say hi to everybody? <laughs> hey, everybody. How you doing? Welcome, welcome. Um, See, Phyllis is uh, in there. And hey, guys, post in there where you're from. We'll see your name, but I just want to see where everybody's from. I think we've got people from around the world. Uh, looks like it's really filled it up. It's going to be really cool. We're going to have a good time today. Yes, we are. So this is how to teach any dog to stop barking and start behaving. So I'm really excited to be here with you guys. I just wanted to kind of give everybody a minute to get here. I know this is uh, new for me, new for you. This format at least is new for me. And this is definitely what you have been looking for. JR is going to be helping me. JR is my husband again. He's going to be helping me by answering any questions you guys have in the chat box um, and if I have any technical difficulties which knock on wood I do not he's going to be helping me out so let's go ahead and get started thank you thank you thank you so much for being here and yes I've already told you this is not your usual course or class entirely different techniques so if you feel like you have tried in the past and it hasn't worked do not worry this is what you've been looking for. So I do want to make sure you are in the right place because I am expecting, we, we are filling up quickly. <laughs> and I definitely want to make sure you don't get kicked out. So the way it works, if you click onto another tab or if you downsize, I don't want you to lose, I don't want, to, I don't want you to miss out on anything. So um, definitely stay here. I want to make sure you're in the right place. If you are here for the Stop Barking Masterclass, you are in the right place. So turn off all of your distractions. So if you have Facebook open, close it. If you're texting, if you got a TV show going, turn it all off. Go someplace quiet because this masterclass can be a life-changing experience for your dog. And I tell you this because researchers are actually saying that we have so many distractions today with cell phones, texting, YouTube, Twitter, and all the other technology that's literally at our fingertips, our ability to stay focused is becoming hindered. And we're starting to miss out on learning things that are potentially life-changing. But we're missing out on all of this learning because of the, all of these distractions. So please, turn off or remove yourself from any distractions, and I promise you will be glad that you did. Okay, so... I do want to make sure I tailor this training to the skill level of the audience. So I'd like to take a little survey. Yes, this does mean audience participation time. Okay, on the screen right now is a question. And the question is, if you asked your dog to stay and then left the room, how long would he or she stay? So there are going to be four options here. And I want you to put your answer in the chat box. So if you haven't found the chat box yet, go ahead and find it. Let me know where you're from and then post your answer to this question. Um, feel free to comment as much as you want throughout this masterclass. I'm going to answer as much as I can at the end. But for right now, I want to go through these four answers to the question. A, my dog doesn't know how to stay. B, less than five seconds, C, 
less than 30 seconds, or D, more than a minute. And oh my goodness, if you have more than a minute, you and your dog are absolute rock stars. But even 30 seconds is a really long time uh, for your dog to stay. And just because whether your dog, doesn't matter what you answer, doesn't mean you and your dog aren't a rock star. You can get there. Don't worry about it. You, get, you and your dog can get there. So um, I'm gonna, there is a little bit of a delay. I'm gonna let you guys know this in advance. So yes, there is just a little bit of a delay. So I'm gonna wait just a moment and I'm gonna start seeing, yes, I'm starting to get a lot of different answers like- A lot of A's, a lot of A's, a lot couple of, B's. Okay, a lot of A's and some B's. Uh, Connie, Connie, Vasali has a C there. Connie, you're picking up. Ooh. Kelly Conley is in Kentucky. She's got a C. Man, you guys are pretty good. Wow. Christine Bailey has got a C. Margaret Bow Alley has a C also. You guys are really experienced. Wow, that's the college awesome. College Light Club's got a B. Earl has a C. So, wow, you guys are doing good, man. That's this, this full <laughs> really amazing. So, let's, yeah, I'm really, I'm impressed with you guys already. So, let's move on for now. And I want to tell you a little bit about me. So I want to reveal something to you that I really hate to admit, but at one point in my life, I used to think that I didn't really like dogs. And what I mean to say here is that I didn't think I was a dog person. I've always liked cats a lot. So it didn't really make sense to me that I didn't feel the same way about dogs because really I like all animals. I was so wrong about dogs, but for all the right reasons. So this here, this is my dog, Kim, you're seeing right now on the screen. She's a rescue from a shelter in Mexico, not too far from where we live. And of course, that's me to the left. I know, we, I get told this all the time that we look pretty similar. Um, she was up for adoption for almost two years before we got her. And they told us that her wild hair was something people were just turned off by. But my husband and I really like it. So I am interested in hearing your opinions about her hair. Put her, put your comments in the chat box. Let me know what you think about Kim's hair. Personally, I love it, but I know I'm biased. I do want to hear what you've got to say. And again, there is a little bit of a delay, but um, let's see what you guys are saying. I love her hair. I know, I do it's too. Cool. <laughs> it really is. It's like, if you got a pet her, it feels like human hair. She's awesome. Actually, her you hair guys is look pretty like wild. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's similar. <laughs> it's pretty similar. Okay, so, look, I'm gonna blow your mind in a few minutes because the dog you have right now will be the best behaved dog you'll ever know as soon as I share with you some little known secrets. You can apply them instantly and get results right after this master class. Yes, you can have the perfect dog without spending hours training. This is crazy and you may get a little angry because I'm going to reveal to you why everything you've ever heard about dog training and whatever you've learned in the past about training dogs is absolutely wrong and how you can have that perfect dog almost immediately. You're going to want to stay to the very end of this master class because I'm going to also be sharing with you the seven miracle secrets that I accidentally uncovered which makes any dog no matter the breed, their age, or past history, an awesome obedient pet. Heck, in addition to that, I'm going to show you how you can get my book that explains these seven steps absolutely free. Look, thousands of people have paid for my book, but I'll show you how you can get it for free. But first, let me tell you a story. Look, I get questions all the time, and let me read a few of them to you. Margie in Hampstead, UK says, help, my dog is barking all night and no one can sleep. What do we do? Maybe somebody else here on the masterclass can relate to this. We can definitely figure this out and help you and your dog get a good night's sleep. Mark says, my neighbors are complaining about our dog barking and threatening to call the city. We can't lose our beautiful pet. Mark, first of all, are they really gonna call everyone in the city? 
that would be a lot of phone calls. Are you sure they're even serious about that? <laughs> but really, no, Mark, I completely understand. I feel for you and definitely we can help you out. Tina says, when I'm on the phone, actually when the phone rings, my dog starts barking. What do I do? Well, Tina, do you have your ringtone set to bark? Maybe? No? <laughs> uh, let's see. Eric, my dog barks and runs in circles around my yard, and there's an indentation all the way around my yard. Why is she doing that? You know what, guys? If you can relate to this, if your yard looks like a NASCAR track, we can fix this for you. doesn't matter how long it's been going on, how bad your yard looks now, we can fix that. Tony in Ottawa, Canada says, my dog constantly barks when people come to the door and just won't stop. I have to put him in another room. Tony, first of all, my heart really goes out to you, but yes, this is one of the easier problems to work with and we can certainly fix the issue. So, before we get into the training, and we will be getting into some really juicy training, I do want to give you a warning. None of this will work. None of it. If you don't have a healthy dog, before you start any training program, make sure your dog is healthy. You've taken them to the vet. You've had them checked out. Think about it. If you don't feel good, are you going to be on your best behavior? Absolutely not. And the same is true for your dog. It's only fair, guys. So, you no longer have to punish your dog for being a dog. Here's the truth. Dogs are supposed to bark. The question is, why? Why do dogs bark? If you know that, then and only then can you work with your dog to stop the barking. It's their job. And I'm going to explain more to you in just a little while on why it's their job and how you can benefit from this being their job. So here's the big secret. The key is controlling when they bark. And when they don't bark, we don't want them barking incessantly or at inappropriate times. We want to control when they bark and more importantly, when they don't bark. So for the big secret, the simple solution is to understand why they bark. Remember I told you before, if you know the why, then you can control the when. You can control the solution and you can control your dog's barking. Once you understand this little known secret, which most people don't, and that's why they have this problem. So to help you understand, I'm going to reveal to you the four bark motivations. You can solve all barking issues immediately once you get this, but also use these secret motivations to control all of your dog's behavior all of the time. Before I do, I want to share with you some amazing facts about dogs. All dogs are smart, <laughs> but, but some just barely make it, as you can kind of see here <laughs> from some of these dogs in these images. I don't know about this any of these three dogs, but the one walking up to the lion, that one, I hope is photoshopped. Um, <laughs> dogs can help us by reading our emotions. A recent study found that dogs' emotional centers in the brain light up in response to happy barks or joyful laughs. Oxytocin spikes in both species when dogs and humans share a mutual gaze. This explains why when we meet eyes, I feel like we are really bonding and connected. The scientists even compared it to human mother-infant relations. Post in the chat and let me know if you get this. If you have ever felt this way with your dog now or with any other dog you've ever had, let me know, post in the chat, because I know I definitely feel this way. Yeah, I feel that way too, seriously. Our dog will just look in my eyes sometimes. I'm like, 
what? What do you want? <laughs> and she'll get up on the couch and just, she's laying down, she's relaxing, and all of a sudden she just sits up and she starts staring at me. And I'm like, watch TV, and I'm, I can just feel it. And I turn and she's like looking in my eyes. Do you guys experience that? Put it in the, put it in the chat section if you do. If yeah. you've ever experienced that connection where your dog's just looking at you, and sometimes it's frustrating because you know they want something, but put it in there. Uh, yeah, somebody says they love your training style too. I put in there how positive it is. Yes. And um, Connie just mentioned I bought her book and I really enjoyed it. So thank you, Connie. Oh, that was thank really you cool. so much, Connie. I really yeah. appreciate that. Very cool. Okay, so. so oh. put that, put that, don't forget, guys, put that in the chat. Yes. If you've ever experienced that, we want to know if you've experienced it. I do want to know. I'm a husband off to the side, by the way. Yes. <laughs> uh, we've got a ton of people on this interview, guys. Really appreciate you showing up. Dogs can even smell cancer. So, if you think if you think your dog is dumb, guess what? They are the only ones that we know of who can actually smell and detect cancer. So think about that and imagine if your dog can do this too. You might not think they're so dumb anymore. Dogs align with magnetic fields when going to the bathroom. And I know a lot of times people comment and even my husband will comment sometimes and you know, our dog is like walking in circles trying to find the perfect spot to go to the bathroom. And it's like, there is so much more going on than we can just tell on the surface. It's, it's incredible the things they can do and we have no idea. So I've always felt this way, but now there's actually science to back this up. Dogs avoid people who are mean to their people. I saw this the first time, probably, I don't know if it was like a year or two ago, but I really relate to this because I see so many dogs doing this. They can tell when a, dog, when a person is good or not. It's really absolutely amazing. Dogs prefer to earn their treats. Now. This is unlike some humans out there who want everything for free. Dogs actually want to earn their treats and feel better about themselves when they've accomplished something. Let that sink in for a minute because if you ever think about how good you feel when you've really accomplished something, this is the same thing your dog is feeling when they've accomplished something and you're rewarding them for it. So let me now get back to what started my dog journey. Now, do you remember in the beginning that I didn't used to think that I liked dogs? This was a long time ago, but it's true. It all started when I met my husband's dog. She was so sweet, but not terribly well behaved. I Can I show you a picture of her real quick? That's her. This is Miss Gracie. She was such a sweet dog, and if you have a chihuahua, Post in the chat and let me know because these are some really all dogs are special. That was my that but, was my chihuahua I had when I first met Jessica. Yeah. I didn't know anything about dogs and yet they allowed me to have one. So it was like they did. Good. In fact, it's for my kids more than anything. My husband has had a number of dogs before we met, and this one um, I think changed him a little bit in a good way. <laughs> um, but I'm going to take you back ten years ago. I met my now husband and I went over to his house. He had this little black chihuahua named Gracie. We entered his house through the garage and into the side door of the kitchen. Off to the right was a utility room with a gate and there sat Gracie. She looked sad and lonesome and I asked why she was in there. He said because she'll pee everywhere and if I let her out she'll jump up on you. So I went to the center island of the kitchen, I pulled out a bar stool, sat down and he went over and removed the gate. Sure enough, Gracie bolted from the utility room straight towards me as she was going a little fast she slid and bumped into my foot. Then she immediately started jumping up on my leg and incessantly barking. I looked at him and said, you know I'm really not a dog person. He looked a little bit offended but as irritating as she was at that moment I think he got it. It made me think, why don't I like dogs that much? Now, I want to share with you another picture, a picture that is so very important to me because this picture is what got me to love this dog. Are you ready? It's my husband. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have even been introduced to Gracie. And you see that other dog, that other dog? 
Her name is Claire, the one that I'm holding. She is my very first dog, the very first dog that I ever adopted. And she was actually pulled out of a hoarding situation. She had just given birth to a litter of puppies that all died. And uh, when I adopted her, she had a mouthful of rotten teeth and a mammary tumor. And I spent a pretty penny getting her well, but it was all worth it. She was so scared and so timid. She literally walked around the walls of the house trying to avoid everybody. It was really, really super sad, but she came around and it didn't take her very long to start liking me. It took her a little bit longer to start like start liking my husband because she had she definitely had an aversion to men, but we definitely worked through it. And that is my Claire Bear, as I call her. So, here's the truth and why I thought I didn't like dogs. Most dogs weren't that well behaved. But here's the big question. Why is that? I had seen dogs that were really well behaved, but they were few and far between, at least for me at that point. And I remember being in a Starbucks one day and a big tough guy covered in tattoos with his head shaved walked in with a huge pit bull on a leash. He was a tan pit bull with floppy ears. The man ordered his drink, walked over, looked at his dog, held his hand up, making a gesture for his dog to sit. The dog sat down and was totally quiet. I was impressed by how he knelt down, hugged the dog, caressed his right ear, and then stood back up. I could tell by the way the dog turned his head, gazed into his eyes, that he really loved the man. So here's the problem I had at that point. I had always heard that pit bulls were mean. They attacked people. They were ferocious. But what I saw in this Starbucks that day did not match with what I had been hearing. And it got me to thinking, maybe it wasn't the dog. Maybe it wasn't the breed. Maybe you don't need to be mean to get a dog to respect you. Maybe there was a better way. That's when I started to study about dogs' behaviors. Here's another picture of my dog, Gracie. I hope you don't mind because she's just so cute. I love her and miss her a lot, actually. But this is when I fell in love with dogs. <laughs> Since then... <laughs> You know, we knew Guys, this would happen. I knew this was going to happen. This is a dog barking class. It wouldn't be funny if our dog barked. I Thank knew this you. was going to yeah. happen, especially this time of day. And you can see what she job. just did as she just stopped, guys. She knows if we say thank you um, to stop barking, that she'll come she back does. over to us so she can see her. Come on, sweetie. And she's like kind of all happy because she Good warned girl. us of something. Come on. Jessica, Jessica's going to teach you how to do this. I am. Second. And I was just not 30 minutes ago telling my husband, I know that she's going to bark because this is live. Anyway, <laughs> so since then, I have authored a book that thousands of people have purchased and gotten amazing results. And was it Carol just a few minutes ago said she really loved it? So thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and this is the book that I'm going to show you how to get for free at the end of this master class. I've also become a certified animal trainer and animal behaviorist. And I have shown thousands of people how to take their dog, who was once misbehaved, to being one of the most well-behaved members of the family. So I'm probably like you. The reason I, I used to think that I, didn't, I wasn't a dog person is that I never saw that many well-behaved dogs. Hey, can I share a couple comments with you? I'm getting there. She can't, yeah. Jessica can't see comments, I, I guys. Can't. So if you have a question for her or anything, put it in there. Earl says he got your book. You even autographed it for him. He's really excited about that. He I loves can. it. He has a service dog. Oh. Um, let's see who else here. My four-year-old barks at air. So, <laughs> uh, so we got to work on that. Mine barks for anything, Jones says. Phyllis is the one who has a barks at air. Uh, let's see here. You should quality. Uh, let's see. Your sound quality is bad and distracting. I'm so sorry. Oh, I'm you know, sorry. I'm sorry about that. What else Margaret saying here? My two-year-old German Shepherd is very well behaved, but my nine-month-old Border Collie is very destructive and naughty. Okay, we've got stuff for you. Jessica's going to help you with that. We'll yes. This, this thing. And uh, by the way, guys, this is really helpful when you put these comments off to the side because these are things you can actually address. Um, we can answer some of this. And we're Absolutely. Gonna have a, I didn't tell you, but we're going to have a question and answer thing um, at the very end. Connie's got a little trouble with the sound, too. Uh, let's see. 
I, you know, I, it's probably because I'm live streaming. Yeah, um, honey, I'm not at the same microphone she is, so that's probably why mine sounds like it's a little buzzy here. Maybe I should lean over there a little. Thank you. Yeah, that. he he is a few feet away from me. Um, um and let trying me, to use yeah, my mic. Let me get over here a little closer. Thanks for letting us know. Thank you. We don't know very much. Um, yes. Let's see here. Earl says, uh, as a service dog, she cannot work. That's awesome, Earl. Yes. Yeah, that's right. I forgot. That is so very true. Very true. Uh, Raven, Earl says, Raven barks at the door, uh, knocks, and people she feels are sketchy. Isn't they cool? No yes. dog can figure that out. I mean, they know if somebody is sketchy. And we want them to bark if somebody is sketchy, sure. right? Yeah. So, yes, I can't, that's why my husband is here with me, because I can't see all of your comments in the chat, but I really do appreciate them, and we will have a QA and a at the end, and um, with the Border Collie, I definitely want to talk to you some more about that. I actually just trained a Border Collie, what, two weekends ago? Yeah. And we had, I, we had a lot of amazing breakthroughs, so I'd love to talk to you about your Border Collie a little bit more later on. Um, but, back to the slide. Once I uncovered the secrets to getting any dog to listen and obey all of your commands, I realized that it wasn't the dog at all. It was just the lack of knowledge of the owner. These are simple but little known techniques that anybody can do. Now, these techniques, they're not techniques that take weeks, months, or years to develop or to teach your dog. I've seen changes, which I'm going to show you in this training today, that in a matter of minutes or hours made a dramatic improvement in the dog's behavior and the owner's confidence. I've literally seen instant changes in any dog, any breed, and any age. By using these crazy simple steps, I'm sorry guys. I had a little ahead of yourself. Oh, I got a little ahead of myself. You're doing great. Anyway, Everybody's so I went down a path of learning and I had questions. Are certain breeds mean? Are certain breeds dumb? Are some breeds just smart? And what I discovered was that none of this was actually true. In fact, scientific research has proven that all dogs are actually pretty smart. As a matter of fact, they can learn hundreds of words. I know that our dog knows many words. In fact, I'm just going to get off for a second here on a little tangent because it is one of my goals this year to create a word board for our dog Kim, which I saw on uh, another lady here in San Diego is doing with her dog and actually teach her to use and talk with using this soundboard. So dogs are incredibly smart and can learn hundreds of words and I'm going to prove it and we're going to do this with our dog Kim this year. I know that our dog knows a ton of words already. I just have to get her to use the board. We can speak to her without gestures or anything and she'll do what we're asking her to do. It's absolutely amazing. Have you noticed this with your dog too? Let me know and post in the chat box if you've noticed the same thing with your dogs. Yeah, anything you've noticed with your dogs, guys, that is related to this, put it in that chat. And if I, if she doesn't get to the answer right now at the end, we're, there's going to be a cool uh, question and answer thing. It's going to be a lot of fun. So stick yes. all that stuff in there. And I'm kind of monitoring off to the side. And let me know if this sound is better. Those <laughs> of you who said there was a buzz because I'm over by her computer now, so maybe that was a problem. Just let me know. Probably. Awesome. Okay. So... Did you know that dogs can actually do arithmetic, according to researchers? I don't know if they can use a calculator, but they can count, and that is pretty amazing. They can read human emotions. They know if you're happy, if you're angry, if you're sad, and not only can they read your emotions, but your emotions also affect your dog's emotions. They can actually guess what other dogs are thinking. And it doesn't even have to be a dog that they live with. They can do this with dogs they encounter in the park or on a walk. Imagine if you could do that. So what I'm getting at is that any dog can learn. Okay? So I think we're all agreed now. I've given you enough evidence at this point. We know 
that any dog can learn, right? Your dog isn't too old, isn't too young. It isn't about their breed or what you've done in the past, right? Good. Post in the chat that you know your dog can learn. So right now, none of you out there think that your dog can't learn because you're here. It's just a matter of knowing what to do. Okay, guys, so post in the chat that you do understand your dog can learn. <laughs> Just say, I understand, or something like that. That way we know that everybody gets it. Because some people actually think that their dog can't learn, and that's not true. It so is not true at all. If you, if you understand that they can learn. Not true at all. So people actually pay me to come into their homes and teach their dog to stop barking. But I can't go into all y'all's homes. So I've broken this down into a very simple formula that anyone can follow. But I'm giving it to you for free right here, right now. So this is only a two step process. Yep, two steps, not 20, not 200. So if you can count to two, then you can do this. Probably one of the simplest things that I teach is how to stop a dog from barking. So step one, identify the why. This is true in life with a lot of things. If you know the why, if you know the motivation, then you can change the behavior. And here's the good news. There are only four reasons why they bark. That's really good news. Why? Because if there were 40 or 400 motivations, this training would be pretty tough. This is what dogs do. They can't talk to you in any other way. They are trying to communicate with you. They're not trying to be irritating. They're just trying to communicate. So here are the four types of bark motivations. First, we've got alert barking. Then we've got boredom barking. Then we've got excitement barking. And I put play barking in here as well because that is also excitement barking. And then we've got fearful barking. But for the purpose of this training, I'm gonna go ahead and cover alert barking since that's probably the number one problem people have with their dogs. The other ones I cover in some other training that I have. So why does a dog alert bark? So dogs were beginning to be domesticated, we think around 10,000 BC. What does domesticated mean? It means that dogs were living alongside humans for mutual benefit. This was really cool when I figured this out. Now, you may hear your dog barking and immediately start getting pissed off, but what if you realized that when your dog is barking, they're actually trying to tell you that there is a potential threat and they're alerting you to potential danger? Doesn't that make you take a step back and think, wow, are they just trying to protect me? Now that you understand this a little bit better, don't you want to return the favor and protect your dog? I know that's how I feel about my dog. So dogs feel like they have a duty to protect you. And here's Kim. We were in the park and she heard a noise in the distance. Do you see that look in her eye? She heard something. She's alerting to something. Do you see your dogs doing this? Let me know in the chat box if you've noticed your dogs alerting to something. So the question here is, why do they feel this? Dogs feel they have a duty to protect us because you are their world. They depend on you for food, for water, shelter, love and affection, everything, every single thing that they need to survive is provided by you because we've domesticated them. So I want you to think about this for a second. When your dog barks and it's an alert bark, they're trying to protect their whole world. Kind of makes you think a little bit differently about that bark, doesn't it? They are actually warning you of possible danger. And they want your help. But how do most of us normally react? 
Because so many people have been taught to yell and tell their dog to stop barking. More than likely, that's what you're doing now. But what is your dog hearing when you start yelling while they're barking? To them, it sounds like you're joining in on the alert barking, which makes them feel like the danger is even more real. Have you ever caught yourself doing that? Put your comment in the chat box and let me know if you have caught yourself yelling at your dog when they're barking. And I don't want you to feel bad. It's not your fault. This was the old way of thinking. But as you know, it doesn't work. How many times have you yelled at your dog and they actually quit barking? Now, if they had, you probably just startled them. They didn't think, oh, I should quit barking. So now I want to show you what does work. First, you need to acknowledge the alert your dog is providing to you. Now, this is our front door right here in this picture, and I hated to do it, but for the sake of this picture, we have a ring doorbell, and it has a very distinct sound. If you have a ring doorbell, you know what I mean. And Kim knows that sound. So I set up the sound on my phone, and I got JR, my husband, to stand there with the camera, and she jumped up at the window when I made the sound because she knew someone was at the door. When a dog does this, they're generally alerting to a particular area, the front door, the back door, etc. Rarely does a dog alert bark from sitting in the middle of the room. It could happen, but if it does, they'll generally move towards an area that they hear the sound coming from. Maybe they can't yet identify where it's coming from, so they'll be in the middle of the room, but as soon as they do identify it, they want to tell you and show you. And guys, give me just a second to take a sip of water. I know my husband is like frivolously typing over there, so y'all must be putting in a ton of- Frivolous? Frivol that's the wrong word. That is the wrong word. I'm passionately- Ferociously. Ferociously, but not frivolously. Passionately. Yeah. I chose the wrong word. Let me take a drink of water Work real quick. Over here, guys. Hey, I want to read off some of the comments here. Jazz361020. First off, you've got to get a different name. We don't know who you are. <laughs> um, it says, yes, I yell at him to stop. So, you know, what Jessica just went over is your dog is here and you bark with them when you yell at them. It's like, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, you can hear it too. Huh? Let's bark together. So that's going to actually make them bark more. Bark more. And she's going to give you a solution to this in just a second, by the way. Uh, Margaret says, especially when they see the cats. Okay, ah, yeah, that's an interesting yeah. one. And that falls into another category too, mm -hmm. uh, Margaret. So she's gonna go over you know, a whole lot more information, but we're definitely yes. gonna go over and fix this barking at the door thing, barking at windows, barking at the noise outside, whatever. She's gonna give you the solution in just a second. So uh, if, if some of you are taking notes, I would take notes, because this works pretty amazing. If you were at the beginning of this call, our dog started barking in the middle of this presentation. And I said, thank you, Kim, and she stopped. And you know what? You can do the same thing with your dog because this dog that I have here, and Jessica will get more detail, but I mean, you know, she's a rescue from Mexico. She came with a lot of baggage. You know, she was three years in a, uh, what do you call it? A foster. A foster. And rescue. Thing, and rescue. Mm -hmm. and so, man. <clears throat> yes. um, Earl says that makes total sense. Um, let's that see here. Rachel you. says, ours doesn't... A, don't even care when somebody rings the bell, but they mainly bark when they are playing with each other or sometimes on walks when they get excited when they see other pups. Right, and that's a different kind. It is a different kind. You know, that's kind. not the alert barking. Yeah, the play barking and the alert and the um, um, But yeah, guys, put your comments sure. in there because uh, Jessica's going to have a really good mm -hmm. Q&A at the end of this. And, you know, if, if I don't answer it, if she doesn't answer it now, we are going to cover it. So yes. let's get back into the training there. She got her water. I did get my water, I'm so. Like <laughs> that was definitely the wrong word. <laughs> okay, so they want to tell you and they want to show you because they are asking for your help. So this is the hidden secret. Dogs who bark more, alert bark more, tend to be more nervous. And I'm going to tell you more about that in just a second. So if you've got a nervous dog, you'll want to stick in here because we're going to work on that too. So remember my dog, Kim, we've talked about her quite a bit. She's kind of a special dog, 
not necessarily in a good way. She came from a rescue that pulls dogs out of Mexico. Now, this means several things. She had to fight for her food, she got very little affection, and she was constantly nervous and alerting. So she was a lot more difficult to, to train than the dog you probably have. Heck, she didn't even understand English. You may think that sounds silly, but understand, for the first time in almost three years of her life, she heard English when we adopted her. She had only heard Spanish before. So she was at a mental, physical, and affection disadvantage. And we know all of this because we have a lot of backstory from the rescue. Um, I'm, I'm friends with one of the leaders or one of the founders of the rescue. So I have a lot of backstory about what happened in her foster home. So I know all of this about her. Yeah, they actually weren't even feeding her, which is really bad. It, it was... Yeah, they were getting donations of food yeah. to get this guy. This guy had like seven dogs who would get food donations, and he was selling the food in Mexico and just giving them enough to keep them alive. And this guy was actually working at a rescue. Yeah. So it was pretty bad stuff. So the dog you have is probably going to be a whole lot easier to train than Kim was for us. Here's Kim on the very first day she came to America. This is the day that we adopted her, and that's me holding her, even though I had a lot darker hair then. <laughs> um, now, in this picture, we were noticing certain behaviors with her. That's my husband there in the chair, and you'll notice in the background we had certain areas of the house blocked off because we were still getting in, in the getting to know each other phase with Kim. Now, I want you to notice her behavior. You see how she's on top of everything. I share this with you because I want you to understand that she's exhibiting those protective traits that we've been talking about. She was probably more high strung than your dog is right now, but maybe not. Post in the chat and let me know how high strung your dog is. Your dog barks, alert barks, because they're getting, they're, they're not getting any help. Now, I want to take you back to that picture of me and Kim at the front door after the doorbell rang. Here it is again. I want you to look at this picture really close. Can you figure out what is going on here in this picture? Post in the chat if you figured it out. And there is a delay, so I'm just going to wait a few seconds for you guys to actually post in the chat box. What was the, question? So can the question is, can you figure out what is going on in this picture? All right, let's see here. Yes, so post in the chat and let me know if you can figure out what's going on in this picture. Outside of, I don't have any shoes on, or <laughs> there's no a, shoes. I don't have any shoes on. I don't, I don't like wearing shoes in my house. And that cat statue has a chipped ear, I know that. But outside of that, <laughs> oh, come on, what's know. going on? Has, yes, so. You love that statue. I love that statue. I've had it for many, many years. What's so, going on in the picture, What's going on guys? in this picture? You win. You could win, like, what? How many, how win, many uh, gold stars could they win? You could win five gold stars. Five gold stars? That's you a lot. A lot of people. Uh, let's see here. What's going on in the picture? Yeah. The woman is acknowledging. The woman is Jessica, by the way. That is me. <laughs> the woman is acknowledging the alert. Very good, Connie. Ooh, We're getting this. Connie, five you must have read my stars. book. Let me uh, put those in there real quick. Yes. Uh, awesome. Yes, I am. Let's see if I can so. Everybody else guess. Well, wait, wait, you know, because I just told you Connie was right. Yes. <laughs> now they all know that Connie's right. So, I'm going to play this video for you, and I'll explain once it's done what's happening here. I should, have, I should have turned my volume up for you guys. Okay. Start it again, because I wanted to see this. This is really cool. Okay. Take your headphones out. Is that Thank you. Can you turn the volume up more? Because I don't think they do. I have the volume all the way up. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, we should have jacked that up a little bit. I should have. So, what I've done here is after Kim barked, she tried to tell me someone was at the door. Now, remember, this is how they communicate with us. We don't want to stop their barking altogether. We just want to be able to control when and how they use their bark. 
My dog Kim is trying to tell me that someone is at the front door, that there is a possible danger. Now, if I just sit on the couch and yell, stop barking, she thinks I'm barking with her. Imagine, in this video here, I'm helping Kim. So instead of sitting on the couch, I went over to the area that she determined was a possible danger. She knew it was outside, so I went there and I looked out the window. She even <laughs> looks with me, if you notice. It's so cute. She jumps up and actually looks out the window with me. I give her a keyword, minus thank you, and I'll talk more about that in a second, but I real, but realize that Kim knows her keyword now, so I don't always have to go to the door. I can actually tell her thank you from the couch now, but of course we've been doing this for a while, and you probably noticed if you were here at the beginning, we're in our living room right now, and Kim was in the front room barking, and we told her thank you from here, and she stopped, so it, it does work. So I think I think I'm gonna oh, no. she just heard, that's why I had my headphones on because I didn't want her to hear the ring doorbell again. So let's see. Okay. In all fairness, this is the finished product of my method. So let me tell you the steps to get there. First, acknowledge the alert and remain calm. The first step is to acknowledge their alert. This is what your dog has been asking you to do all along when someone comes to the door or when they hear a noise outside or something is in the backyard. What they're saying is, come help me. I'm trying to protect you and our house and our family. Now, if this has been going on for years and you're yelling or shushing, First off, your dog thinks that you're barking with them, and they also think that you're not much help when it comes to protecting the house. Remember their job from the beginning of this training is to alert you and protect you from potential danger. So if you don't respond to their barking, they're just going to have to keep barking because you're not stepping in and taking over to protect. You're just not helping. This is gonna take a little bit of work on your part, just a little bit. But the little bit of work you put into this now is going to pay off big time later because your dog will be able to stop barking and calm down. Number two, go to the alert area. Again, calmly. And if you can get in between your dog and what they're alerting them at, that's even better. So if you notice in this picture here, I've actually gone to the alert area. She was barking at the front door, so I've gone to the front door to see what she's barking about. Check the area for safety. And here I am checking it out. I'm looking to see if everything's okay. And everything does look good. So I turn, I don't give praise, I do remain calm, and I give her a keyword. Again, we say thank you. You can pick any keyword you want. And honestly, I could go off on a tangent about the keyword you should pick. Generally, just pick something with either a positive or a neutral connotation, like no emotion to it whatsoever. Thank you for us works really well. Um, I, uh, To be fair, I also say bless you when she sneezes. And in fact, I don't think I've even ever t told my dog to move. I tend to say, excuse me. I just prefer being polite. And, you know, it's one of those things, if I'm polite, she's polite. It's just how the world works. Now, let's be honest, this probably won't work the first time you do it. This is all new to your dog. This is all different. But here's what it actually does. It plants the seed in your dog's mind that you are finally helping protect your home. And it's about time, isn't it? In all fairness, you didn't know any better. You didn't realize what your dog was trying to tell you. So don't feel bad. Now, we have set up in your dog's mind that you're finally checking things out. And when they alert you, you're actually doing something about it. You're coming to check and make sure things are safe. And that's all that they're asking of you. You must remain calm. And I will tell you, this is probably going to be the most important factor in getting quick success. 
I would almost tell you to be emotionless in alert situations. Your dog can read your emotions. Happy, sad, excited, angry. And if you remain calm, your dog is going to pick up that nothing is wrong much quicker. So stage two is the training if they don't stop barking. Remove your dog from the perceived danger. A safe space where they can calm down in peace. So what's happening here is we want to take our dog to an area. It can be a bathroom or a bedroom, a guest room, somewhere that is quiet and away from the perceived danger. What we're telling our dog is that I understand you're alerting to something. I've come and checked it out. If you don't believe me that everything is okay, I'm going to take you and I'm going to put you in a safe spot until you can calm down. And I'm going to tell you what happens in just a minute. So I've, I, I do want to tell you, though, that I've never had a dog that went longer than about 15 minutes barking maybe 20 minutes and really that is a long time but it's tiring so they will calm down especially if you calm down so what's going to happen is you're going to wait for your dog to calm down once they're in that safe space the real key here is that you remain calm don't talk don't panic don't yell don't say no or stop Take a moment to center yourself. Take a deep breath. Breathe out all of your emotions. Take in a new breath with nothing but calmness and gently lead your dog to a safe place. Have patience with your dog because you know what? They have patience with you. You're going to wonder what your dog is up to in there. Don't worry. He'll find something to do. But all kidding aside, your dog will whine and bark because they still think there's a danger. And up to this point in their life, you haven't shown them that you've taken care of anything. We have to take some time now to show our dogs that we're here to acknowledge their alert and take over, allowing them to become calmer. This will take some time, but it is so worth it once you start seeing how much calmer your dog is becoming. You're gonna feel like it's taking an eternity. I get it, but it's not, it just feels like it. Resist the urge to open the door until your dog calms down. Because if you let them out prematurely when they're still overwhelmed and worked up, they'll be thinking, I knew my human couldn't take care of stuff and I've still gotta handle everything. Their brains are still in that mindset of having to bark to warn potential threats, but it it beats putting up with the barking for years. Think of how nice it will be when your dog stops barking on cue. Some of you are gonna be thinking that your dog is never gonna stop barking. But let me tell you, I've never seen a dog that hasn't stopped barking when they've been put into a safe, uh, safe space, if I can talk. If you run into a situation that you can't handle, contact me. I do private coaching, but I've never met a dog that this hasn't worked for. When your dog stops barking, count to 10. And let me explain how to count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. is not how you count to 10. You actually need to use like actual seconds, count in seconds. So if you count to four, one, two, three, four, and your dog starts to bark again, then they didn't actually stop. They were just taking a break to catch their breath. Don't open the door yet. Wait for them to stop and count to 10. At some point, your dog will stop barking. And really, it, it generally doesn't take that long. Trust me. So, once your dog stops barking, and they will, open the door to the safe room. Don't speak. I know you'll be tempted to say good boy or good girl or something to that effect, but don't do it. Why? 
your emotions will get in the way of the very valuable training taking place. Just open the door, walk away, and go back to whatever you were doing before. At this point, your dog will most likely return to the alert area. You know why? They want to see if you did your job. You haven't been up to this point. You haven't been helping them out. So they need to see for themselves that everything is okay now. And at this point, whatever they alerted to will have passed and you will have just given your dog a sliver of confidence in your ability to protect your home. So your dog is gonna assume one of two things when the danger is no longer there. And either way, it's okay. They're gonna assume that you took care of the danger or possibly that there was no danger at all. But either way, they will understand that safe room as you taking charge and trying to protect them from danger. Now, you're taking the position of someone in charge, which is gonna make your dog feel safer and calmer. They always felt all the burden before. No one was helping them. But I get it. It's not your fault. Your dog has just been thinking that you're lazy. If you have a dog that's nervous, excitable, acting out, or even a bit aggressive, all of these issues can stem from the fact that your dog has been having to alert and protect without any help from anyone else. Remember in the beginning when I told you I would, I would work on that anxiety problem too? This is it. If you have a dog that is excitable, anxious, nervous, all of these things can stem from having too much anxiety and burden of being the only one trying to protect your home. But now, your dog can learn to be calmer since you are going to step in and protect once they alert. And I need another drink of water. Give me one second, guys. I can fill in. Hey guys, if, you, if you're getting this, uh, post in the comment section. I don't know what help my volume is. I apologize if it was scratchy or whatever. It's a YouTube thing. There's nothing I can do about that. Uh, but if you're getting this, type in the chat that you're getting this. I do get it. Um, you know, understand that the dog's trying to help you. Understand the fact that as soon as you let the dog know that you're trying, that, that you understand the alert and go over and check it out and make sure everything's safe, that, you know, your dog's going to look at you and go, oh my God, you're actually helping me now. Now, it doesn't work initially, um, but what you're going to have to do is take that dog away from the danger. And, you know, a couple people have some questions in the... Um, chat about safe rooms the safe room could be like a bedroom or a bathroom uh, preferably dark uh, you don't want to stay with your dog somebody was asking about you know do i stay with my dog the whole point is the dog has to learn to calm itself down now the dog doesn't know what you're doing so when you open that door like she showed you that dog's going to go run to that area again because it's going to go did you take care of stuff now the dog comes out and sees that you took care of stuff and it's going to go what do you know? Maybe this owner really does know what they're doing, or maybe there wasn't a danger. So what you're doing is you're training your dog's brain to say, hey, if you're still scared, I'm going to protect you now. You don't have to worry about it anymore. Uh, and once your dog sees you do that, I mean, it doesn't take long. I mean, I've seen Jessica do this within two hours with a dog that was barking for 14 years. So I'm just telling you, this really, really works. you got you got to be vigilant. you got to make sure everybody in the family does it. But if you get this, if you understand this, this is the key. Um, you know, Jessica, I mean, it doesn't say it, but she doesn't train dogs. She trains <laughs> people, you know? So if you understand what your dog's trying to communicate to you and you react the way they want, all of a sudden you're going to get the results you want. So post in that chat section if you're understanding this. I'm going to look here. Yeah, uh, I see, see on your screen there are a lot says, of yeses. Yes. Earl says yes with a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of explanation <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Lou says yes, very helpful. Judy uh, Ridenor says yes. Margaret Bowley says yes. Ken Massey says yes. I think I want to read some of these. Yay. Kelsey Clayton says yes. Jennifer Keel says yes. Um, let's see here. The college life coach is barking at a guest and alert bark too. Yes, it is. Okay. You know, if, if your dog doesn't know who that is, it has a right to say, hey, who the heck is this? So yeah, you know, the dog doesn't know guests from, from Robin. I mean, really, they don't. They're just trying to tell yeah. you something. And you know, you've heard Kim bark twice since you've been on this call, and both times I said thank you, and she quit. She just quit. 
but I want her to notify me, you know. Um, let's see, Judy says, can you review steps? Uh, let go to window to remove dog um, from window to safe room. Yeah, can you just go over those steps one more time, Jessica? Just, you know, basically. To get, yeah, to to get, get your dog to the safe room? Well, to, you know, what, what to do, and then if they don't stop barking, what to do, okay? Yeah, well, so, yes. To just kind and, of I want to interrupt you one second. Sorry. Yes, the college life coach. The answer is yes, they have to be behind a closed door. They have to be perceived as in a room that they can't get out of to do anything to help because they want to see if you're going to help. So, yeah, when you put them in that room, it's preferably dark, and you have to close the door. You 100% have to close the door because they can't see what's going on. They have to know that when you open that door that you have taken care of the perceived threat. And once they learn that, they're going to start trusting you. And I'll tell you something else. An, an ancillary uh, effect of this is if you've got a high-strung dog, it's probably because it's so scared of stuff that's going on and it thinks that you aren't doing anything about it. And if you have a high-strung dog and you teach this method to your dog, you're going to find your dog is a much calmer dog in a whole lot of different areas because they're going to go, oh, my God, humans – Human here is pretty cool. Human's starting to protect me. I like this. Mm -hmm. So you're going to notice that. Um, yeah, the, the so idea, if you would go through that process, I didn't mean to interrupt you. But yeah, yeah, so the idea of the safe space is to remove that stimulus. So having the door is removing the visual stimulus. If you can turn out the lights, you're you're just that's even more stimulus that you're removing. Um, dogs can see fairly decently in the dark, so uh, there's generally going to be some ambient light, so it's not going to be like pitch black to them. But just removing as much stimulus as possible to help your dog calm down, that's the idea of, of the safe space that you're putting them in. Um, but to actually get them, so what you want to do is intervene in in their alert because right now what your dog is doing is they are both alerting and trying to protect but the only way they have figured out that they can do anything to protect is to bark now if it were an actual intruder they may bark and bite but those would be the only real weapons that they have to protect so because there isn't like a person actually standing in front of them in your home generally um, the alert and the protection is both barking. So we want to, we want the alert bark. We want our dog to, unless, like Earl, you have a service dog and they're not supposed to, to bark. That's, that's a completely different situation. But in general, for our companion animals, we want our dog, that mutual benefit is that they are alerting us to potential danger. That's, that's the benefit that we are getting from our dog. In addition to all of the love and, and you know, just the bond and everything, the relationship that we have with our dog, that's something that has developed over the thousands of years that we have had dogs domesticated. But originally, that their job is to alert us. So we don't want to necessarily, again, unless it's like a service dog, we don't want to train that out of them. We want them to alert us. We just want them to know that we can then take over. So you, what you're going to want to do is Go to wherever they are alerting for, you know, in the instance of the picture and the video I was showing you, it was our front door. And if you can get in between your dog and what they're alerting to, that's great. If you can't, that's fine too. You still, even if your dog, when you first start doing this and your dog isn't calming down right away because they have no idea what you're doing the first few times you're doing this, especially the very first time you're doing this, they have zero clue what you're doing because you've never done this before. You may not be able to get in between your dog and whatever they're alerting to. The, the easiest way to do this, and, and I am a um, positive reinforcement trainer and I use as many force-free techniques as I possibly can. However, in a situation like this, depending on your dog, depending on the size of your dog and how um, excited they are excuse me one second she, she, sorry our dog needs to go outside <laughs> um so you may have to actually lead them by you know gently grabbing a hold of their harness or their collar don't you know i'm not telling you to forcefully drag your dog anywhere that's not necessary 
what we can do is use any technique possible and I have used many techniques with many different dogs depending on how excited they are and how how much they are into that alert barking some dogs you could potentially use treats and and lure them away for many dogs that wouldn't be the case they're just too focused on whatever they're alerting at you can try to use like it's every dog is an individual and every dog is different so you're going to have to work with your dog um, in this particular instance and figure out what is going to work best for you and your dog some dogs will um, respond very well and very quickly to the high pitch of like a squeaky toy or a squeaky ball and that would be just enough distraction for you to be able to lead them into a safe space um, for some dogs you may actually have to take a hold of their harness or collar and, and or even their body and then, again I am not by any means saying to you know drag your dog but it be as gentle as you can and lead them into a safe room and I hope that answered the question appropriately so let's move on to will it work instantly and I think we've kind of covered this because no it is not gonna work instantly because for months and weeks and possibly years I don't know how long it has been that your dog has been alerting you and you haven't helped so your dog is gonna take some convincing that you know what you're doing your dog's behavior from this point forward will be very closely related to your ability to perform once you've proven yourself to your dog so this is what I call an event practice and there are a couple kinds of practices but this one is an event practice because this training is in response to an action so you're reacting to an event there are many different event practices and in the rest of my training I go through a lot more different types of practices the other thing I want to tell you is that you want to do this every time your dog alert barks try not to miss any opportunities now remember this is one of the four types of bark motivations and obviously I can't go through all four of them right now but that's in the rest of my training um, now the other super important factor is that all family members are involved this consistency is paramount to your success so if mom does it and dad doesn't you've got a problem what will happen is that you just won't get consistent results because you're confusing your dog so every family member has to be on board and ready to acknowledge an alert bark from your dog let me know and post in the chat if you understand what I'm saying about consistently consistency and all family members being involved so now are you on the same page with me let me know put yes in the chat if you're getting this and put yes all capitals with an exclamation if you think you can do this let me know and I can I know there is a little bit of a delay so do you see yes, yeah. do you see how this works how it will help you it's so to amazing I mean, she results. does it so quick guys you know I think a lot of people don't want to train their dog because they're like oh my god it's gonna take forever to do this and oh my god it's gonna be so difficult and it's just it's, it's just a few simple steps it really is I mean you know she was amazed when she discovered how to do all this stuff you know we're just passing this along to you because you could get yeah. really awesome results and enjoy your life with your dog <laughs> okay we got all the yeses here yes. Chad says yes got college some life yeses. coach which is Jenny and I looked at your your channel Jenny very very cool she says yes Phyllis Thank says yes Earl says yes Earl says yes uh, Jazz361020 says yes Chad says uh, yes awesome. a, lot, a lot of yeses in here a lot of yeses awesome great guys so I was asked to share some of my private coaching with you now I don't know if you know it or not but I don't normally do these master classes this isn't what I generally do this is not my main business my main business is helping one on one with dog issues I am actually a personal dog trainer and I don't even like to call myself a dog trainer but I have to because if I went around calling myself a people trainer people wouldn't respond well to that 
as you can see from this training, it's really us being able to read what the dog is doing um, and adjusting to those reactions. Now, you understand your dog a little bit better, and you understand how well this works. You understand how you can get immediate results. Now, I actually do this type of training all the time for people who pay thousands to get my individualized help. People need help with being aggressive to other dogs, being food aggressive, running out the front door, having anxiety when you leave the house, digging in the yard, being possessive of objects, peeing in the house, biting, jumping up on people, chewing on objects, pulling on their leash, not coming when called. The fact is that there are different methods I've discovered for all of these issues that work like a charm. I wanted to help more people, but there was never enough time, and it made me sad because I couldn't help everybody that needs help. Let's face it, I couldn't be everywhere, that's not possible, but I wanted to help everyone. And heck, not everyone could afford me, and plus the fact that not everybody wants to have someone come in their home. I mean, I don't like people coming in my home, so I get it, but that didn't stop me from wanting to help more people and more dogs have great relationships. And as you can see in this one training, this stuff works like a miracle. If you think about it, if you go to one of these big classes where you have a whole bunch of dogs and a whole bunch of dog owners in an area that the dog is unfamiliar with, there are just too many distractions for your dog to learn. To get real results, real fast, you need to be in your environment first, which is your home. Now, you know this already, you know how distracted your dog can get outside of your home. In this masterclass, we've covered alert barking, but there's three other types of barking that you're going to need help with, and you know that. In fact, there's probably all different kinds of behaviors that you're going to need help with, but you've probably already realized that. If I were training you, the way our schedules are nowadays, ideally it would be great if I were accessible 24-7, but if I came to your house, obviously I couldn't be available 24-7. My training had to be convenient and be there when you needed it. So I finally figured out what I needed to do. An online video course that walked the pet parents. Yes, I like to call them pet parents. I like it better than owners because I feel like they're my kids. Do you feel that way too? Um, I needed to do an online video course that walked the pet parent through each step of every problem that you could have with your pet. Interesting fact, they say a dog's brain development mimics that of about a two to four year old human child. So they're a bit like children in our home. But there had to be some requirements. It had to be effective. I mean, it's gotta work, right? If it doesn't work, then it's just no good. It has to work for all breeds. So no matter if you have a pit bull or a chihuahua or anything in between, it needs to work. Too many training programs and trainers don't take into consideration that breeds are different. Not only that, but it has to work for any age dog. Some of us have had our dogs for a long time, and for some of us, we have a small puppy. So no matter what age your dog is at, these methods will work for you. It also works for any temperament. So maybe your dog is more relaxed or maybe more hyper. This will still work for you. And yes, even if you failed in the past, this will work for you. Even if your dog isn't the smartest, when in fact it's usually not the dog, it's the owner that doesn't understand the dog, it will work for you. Even if your dog has a high or low energy level, this will work for your dog too. And especially if you don't have a lot of time to train. We're all busy, I get it. We can't sit there for hours training the dog. Heck, if you're like me, I stand in front of my microwave wondering how long it's gonna be. We're all rushed and we want everything fast. So here's the good news. You can see results by training as little as 10 minutes a day. Now I want to show you a few bonuses you can get for free. I put together a free bonus course that I want to give you absolutely free. I call it Fun and Educational Dog Game. Now it has a $49 value but you're not going to have to pay anything for it. You're going to love this because dog this dog game course serves two purposes. The first purpose it serves is to train your dog in a fun way. 
do you ever remember having to go to classes that were so incredibly boring, but then you always had that one teacher that seemed to be able to make anything at all interesting? That's what this course does. Imagine you lose your ability to speak today. You're allowed on the couch, you've got a bed to sleep in, but nobody ever talks to you and nobody ever plays with you. In fact, the only interactions you have are when you do something wrong and you get yelled at. How would that affect your attitude and behavior? Think it would improve it or make it worse? That's exactly why I put this course together. It makes learning fun and it stimulates your dog. And you know what? It downright makes them happy. That's what you want, isn't it? So let me share with you some of the fun and exciting games that you'll learn in this course. In video one, you're gonna learn the Snuffle Mac Food Hunt. I love this. I do this every morning with my dog and she loves it. And I'll show you in the video exactly how I got her to do this. In video two, you're going to learn the hand towel treat roll game. This is a blast and it's hilarious to see your dog work through this one. In video three, I got to tell you, this is one of my favorites. It's the tricky hunt treat ball. I don't want to spoil it, but when you see the reaction from your dog when you start this game, you would pay for this entertainment. And then in the last video, doggy day trips, I'm going to go over how you can have fun traveling with your dog and going places where it seemed like a chore before. This is a game changer. The next bonus is Happy Healthy Dog Nutrition. It has a $79 value, but you can get it absolutely free. What most people don't know is that the most popular brands of dog foods that are out there are making your dog sick. They are increasing your vet bills, increased chances of cancer, increased chances of behavior problems, not to mention they are some of the most expensive ways to feed your dog, but are marketed as economical. So I put together a nutrition course for your pet, but it's a bigger deal than what you think. Video one, I go through something that will really surprise you, nutrition and your dog's mental health. So if you've been having issues with the way your dog reacts, this video alone could solve some problems for you. Video two, I'm gonna dive into what kibble is really made of. This will blow your mind when you see what they're putting into kibble that you're feeding your dog. If you care about your dog at all, you're gonna wanna watch this. Now, if you don't know kib what kibble is, it's that hard food that you find on the shelf that's supposed to last for months and months. That should be a red flag right there. In video three, I talk about the effects of dry dog food. Imagine you consumed a diet of only dry things, never ate a hamburger, never had any vegetables or fruit, and don't let them kid you by putting pictures of fruits and vegetables in the front of those bags. It's not what you think. In video four, I I show you how to feed fresh on a budget because we all want our dogs to eat healthy but a lot of us fear that it's going to cost a whole lot of money. In this video, I'll show you how you can feed a fresh diet without breaking the bank. Video 5 is about good fats versus bad fats. We all know that a barbecue sandwich has fat and so does an avocado, but how do you figure fats in a dog's diet? This video will explain that to you so that you are making the best decisions for the health of your dog. Video six, you're, if you're concerned that your dog won't like the new food because they're a picky eater, then this is the video for you. In this video, I explain how to transition your dog's diet and I make it simple and easy for not only you, but also your dog. And in video seven, I want to, if you want to have some fun, <laughs> you're going to like the next video. This is how to make homemade low cost dog treats. You know how expensive it can get to buy those little bags with just a few ounces of dog treats in there? And heck, with all the recalls, you don't know what you're feeding your dog. Dogs have actually died from some treats, and then they overcharge you on top of that. Now, free bonus course number three is creative crate training. The old methods that you've heard of for this, or if you tried another method, it maybe didn't work, or didn't work that well for you. And that's exactly why I created this course. It's a really easy process if you follow my methods. This is an $89 value, but I want to give it to you absolutely free. It consists of seven videos and a downloadable, easy to follow instruction guide. And let me explain to you why you want and need this course, no matter how much it costs, even though you're getting it for free. This will make your dog emotionally safe by having a place they can go to and feel protected and relaxed. Not to mention the side benefits. If you ever had to evacuate and put your dog in a crate, imagine how they would freak out if they weren't used to it. Or if they had to go to the vet and had to stay in a crate there and weren't used to it. Can you imagine how they could freak out? 
If your dog is not being crate trained because you didn't think it was necessary, you really need this course. And I also want to gift you my book. This book is based on the seven miracle steps that I uncovered that is the main guide for all of my training. You're going to love it. So I'll throw in a downloadable copy of my book so you'll have it to read and reference anytime you want. That's another $19 value, yours free. And I understand you may need more help and support, so I'm also going to give you access to my private Facebook group, The Art of Pet Parenting. So let me just show you around inside. You can see um, in the group there are tons of files and videos. You can post questions. You can get answers. There's, um, you can go back to all of the videos that I have done live or uploaded into the group and um, check out anything that you may be interested in for you and your dog. There are tons of files. It's a really amazing community. This is a $99 value that you'll also get absolutely free. And if you've been keeping track, I'm giving you bonus number one, bonus number two, bonus number three, bonus number four, and bonus number five, a total value of $335 all for free. You get all of these needed courses and my book absolutely free. At this point, you're probably asking yourself, why are you getting all of these valuable courses for free? And I've got to admit, it is a blatant bribe. It's to get you to join my Positive Principles Dog Training course. There's a lot of training in my course, and I realize that, but I wanted to make it affordable for everybody. Let me show you inside the Positive Principles Dog Training course. So this is your homepage, and you're going to start with the seven miracle steps, and there's a video for each one of the seven miracle steps. There's an entire section on recall, another on loose leash walking, basics of training. There are tons of videos and explanations. Any kind of training cue you might need. Lots of different behavior problems and how to solve them, including digging, not listening, potty training. There are tons of downloadable resources available. Um, introducing a new dog or a new cat, products I recommend, clicker training, how to get private training, and of course, all of the bonuses that we just went over, including the book. So, you're probably asked, oh, I got ahead of myself again. Here's what some of my clients have to say. You can hear it this time. I'm absolutely amazed at uh, the progress that was made in such a short period of time, especially with all the distractions. Yeah, much bigger difference. Because normally she'd go on and on and on. That's because uh, teachings and methods, um, they help me understand uh, my dog better. Now it's only been an hour and a half of the training here, and now she's calmed down and her tail is... is up and wagging a little bit more. Uh, she just seems overall more comfortable. Um, and if you're considering doing Jessica's course, I highly recommend it. The, the tips and the tricks that you give with the book and the online course, it, it going hand in hand, it, it's, it's already made a difference in the two weeks that I've had access to it. If anybody's having a problem with a dog, I'd say get a hold of Jessica Fisher. All right, guys, so, I'm, I, I, I'm so sorry that that volume was a little low, but you are probably asking yourself, what will it cost me? So I wanted to price it to make it accessible to everyone, but I knew that some people have more time than others to go through the training and the videos. So I thought the best way to do it was, is with a pay-as-you-go model, where you can pay monthly for as long as you want to stay in it. The regular price is $197 a month, but you're not going to have to pay that. For those of you on this training today, I'm going to take 87% off, and you can get it for only $27 a month. And of course, you'll get the updates. And some people like just staying in there so they can be part of the community and have access to all of the tools that I provide. 
It's like having your own personal access 24-7 to dog training, nutrition, tricks, and tips whenever you want. All you have to do is go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll. And there is a link in the description of this video that you can just click on and go straight there. So go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll right now to get full access. And remember, you're going to get bonus number one, fun and educational dog games of $49 value. Plus, I'm giving you bonus number two, healthy, happy dog nutrition course, which is a $79 value. And although I can't promise that it'll, it'll save you a lot in vet bills, it probably will. And on top of that, I'm going to give you bonus number three, creative crate training, which I think you know by now is a must for any dog owner. That's an $89 value. And to top all that, I'm going to throw in bonus number four, which is the book. All this training is based on a $19 value, but you'll get it absolutely free. Of course, bonus number five, we can't forget that one, access to my private Facebook group, a value of $99, yours free. And the best part, monthly membership into the course that makes it all possible. Positive Principles Dog Training Membership, where you'll have access to all the areas of dog training, nutrition, and enrichment. And you'll be able to access this 24-7. And should you have any questions or problems, you'll have total access to my group. A help desk you can send in questions to and email support so you are never alone. That has a value of $97 a month, but right now you'll get all of this for only $27 a month. Get the Positive Principles Dog Training Membership and all the bonuses for only $27 a month. You can cancel at any time. There are no contracts. If you solve just one problem, it's worth it. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll now to sign up. To get your dog to stop peeing in the house, I mean 27 bucks is so worth it. What does it cost to clean your carpets? What are your carpets worth? Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll now. How about if you get your dog to stop biting? It's worth it. We don't want anything happening to our, your kids or friends or family. So go to the link now, thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll and sign up. Getting your dog to stop jumping up and down on people, it's worth it. It is so embarrassing when your dog jumps up on people. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll now to sign up. Or get your dog to stop chewing on things around the house. $27 is worth it. How many things has your dog destroyed in the house? How many things have you replaced? I think your shoes are worth more than $27. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll now to sign up. Get your dog to stop pulling on the leash. Oh my goodness, do you know how many people every week contact me about this one? $27 would totally be worth it. It's so irritating when you just want to go for a walk and you start to dread it. It shouldn't be that way, and it doesn't have to be. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll now to sign up. Get your dog to come when called. This one is priceless. So $27 would absolutely be worthwhile. It's dangerous if they're running away or running into traffic or getting lost. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll now to sign up. Keep your dog from running out of the front door. Also priceless. I just trained someone the other day whose dog was bolting out the front door. They paid a lot more for my personal training to get that corrected. So yeah, $27 is well worth it. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com slash enroll now to sign up. 
There are so many things in this training that are well worth the $27 investment. So right now, go to the furryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll. Now, again, that is a $532 value for only $27 a month. And now I want to take some of your questions. I know y'all have been posting a lot in the chat, and I had some questions that were also submitted before the master class as well. So I want to go ahead and take some questions and provide you guys with some answers to those questions. And yeah, guys, yeah. go ahead, go ahead and post whatever questions you have. I don't know if you'll get to all of them, but uh, post your questions in there. And, um, you know, I'll, um, I'll read them off to her. I've got, like I said, I've got a ton that were submitted to us prior to this. So, Jessica, do you mind if I start with those and ask you yes, some of those? Yes, go ahead. Okay, cool. And, right, let's um, do that. And actually, we're getting a lot of questions in there, too. Great. Right, I'm going to so, um, actually take a drink of water while you... <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start reading that off while she's getting a drink of water. Um, the first one we actually have is from a Nancy, and she's in Cheshire... UK, it looks like, I guess United Kingdom, yeah. She said that she has a German Shepherd that is really good, but she pulls on the leash and is getting to where I don't want to walk her much. Uh, I mean, she's like 60 pounds, and it's more than I can handle. Can your course help with that? Nancy, oh, I just took a, a drink of water. Sorry about that. Nancy, um, absolutely. I completely understand your concern, and a 60-pound dog is a lot to, when they're pulling on the leash, I have helped many, many people, and in my online course, I actually provide to you videos of me instructing other people, real people with their real dogs, so you get that real life, you know, what happens, and all of the intricacies of watching the dog and seeing how that dog on screen is doing just like your dog is doing and absolutely this course can help you okay i've got i've got another one here this is from bobby with an eye so maybe that's a female uh, <laughs> from utah uh i adopted my dog from the humane society thanks for that first off guys absolutely. make sure you adopt your dog anyhow i adopted my dog from the humane society a few months ago he's a cute little chihuahua mix and i'm still cleaning up pee in my house oh my god that's so horrible uh i don't know what to do does your course cover a dog peeing in the house bobby yes um thank you so much for adopting and for adopting a little dog too i mean i love all dogs but of course that gracie was a chihuahua and that was one of my my first um real experiences with dogs so they they hold a, a special place in my heart um, and absolutely, I know how horrible it can feel when you're just constantly cleaning up pee and you don't know what to do. And again, in my course, I have many videos going over step by step what to do for any, any potty training situation, whether you have a new puppy or an adult dog or you know a dog that you just adopted, no matter how old they are. There is definitely a plan to put in place, and my course covers all of that. And again, thank you so much for adopting. Uh, we've got another question here in the chat. Okay. Um, how do I get my dog to stop attacking my slippers and feet? He is 13 months old. Is that is that covered in the course? 13 month old attacking slippers and feet. My goodness, I would absolutely say you will enjoy especially the um, fun games. Your, you and your dog will find a lot of benefit. That's in the first bonus. Not only in the training course itself, which can provide a lot of structure for you and your dog, and your dog absolutely is going to need that. At 13 months old, they are still very much in that puppy phase. And but with that first bonus, you are going to your you and your You're dog will love it. Things. Yes, <laughs> I get yes, it. Um, absolutely. We've got another one here from Amy in Colorado. My dog is so picky about the food that I can't train him because he doesn't want the treat. How can your horse help me? That's a good question. Yeah, Amy. So your dog is picky with food. I get that. A lot of dogs are picky with food and. 
first of all, that nutrition course will help you out a lot because picky eaters, it, a lot of times that stems from nutritional issues. But what you're really going to love is um, in the, the nutrition course bonus, I also show you how to make your own treats. And what, what I show you, I have yet to find a dog who did not like these treats. So um, you're really going to love Especially especially that bonus. <laughs> and guys, I didn't uh, mention, you want to go to this link if you're interested in going here. Sorry, we're not trying to sell you on it, but I will tell you that that price is uh, a limited time on there. So it's not going to be this price, you know, next week or something like that. So if you think this is of interest to you, 27 bucks, and it's kind of hard to go wrong. But uh, you'll want to go to that link, the furryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll, uh, because mm -hmm. that will not be the price later on, just so you know. Um, who else I got here? I've got Tony in Louisiana. I live in New Orleans. Oh, Ooh, man, I love the food there. Me too. And with all the good food here, a lot of people, uh, health sufferers, I've seen, I can't understand this written. A lot of people have health, I think she means problems. Uh, and the same thing with dogs eating that bad kibble stuff. I'm going to get your course just to get the nutrition videos. Okay, I see where this is going. And learn how to feed my dog better. Yeah, guys, yeah. if nothing else, Get her course for the nutrition part. It will blow your mind when you when you go through that section and you realize what's going on with your dog's system because of the food that you're buying in the stores. Uh, and she also shows you outlets if you don't want to make it and all that where you can get food. I mean, just, just having access to that good food for your dog is well worth it. Um, I got Scott in Maine says, uh, my dog is constantly begging for attention. How do I get her to stop? Scott, yes. You're going to definitely want to check out my book, um, especially, I believe it's chapter four, because you want to make sure you're taking care of your dog's needs, but also it could be a sign of a physical problem, so you, you'll definitely want to make sure that there aren't any physical issues going on. Make sure um, your dog has had a vet checkup and um, there's, there's nothing physically going on that they're trying to, to warn you about, um, but definitely the course can help you with any kind of behavior problem and I think you'll really really love the book okay I got another one from Rebecca in New York I love my dog but my friends won't come to my place anymore because he jumps up on them and he's so overexcited and won't calm down it's downright embarrassing can your course help me with this Rebecca it is embarrassing and I feel you and I have dealt with many dogs and, and I'm thank you for saying that by the way because I I have gone to so many people's homes who have, you know, told me their dog has this problem or that problem, and I get there and the dog is jumping up all over everyone, and I'm like, you've never even mentioned this to me. <laughs> I guess it's just too embarrassing for some people to, to think they can even mention, but it doesn't have to be. Absolutely, uh, the course does cover jumping up and getting overexcited, and really, even what you learned in this master class can help your dog to start to calm down. Of course, you're going to want to address the jumping specifically, and I do cover that in my course, but um, reading the book and, and putting into place what you learned in this master class is just one of the many ways you can help your dog just calm down overall, um, which can, can help with all of that over-excitement and the energy that your dog has. Here's one that I know you've helped people with before, Jessica. This is Tony in Pensacola, Florida. My dog runs laps around the edge of the fence and barks in my backyard, and my neighbors complain to me all the time. Can your horse help me? Tony, absolutely. So, first of all, um, your dog running laps in your backyard, I totally understand. I have seen so many dogs do this, and... Not only, of course, what you learned in this master class today, you definitely want to put into place, even if your dog is outside. I know in the, in, in the explanation um, or the example I gave you in this master class, I was inside. But even if your dog is outside, the same principles apply. There is still alerting. They're still in, in their territory, in your territory. Um, the same principles apply. And I, I have helped a lot of people with this, and we definitely want to harness your dog's energy into something positive. Um, so you'll definitely enjoy the book, 
and there are lots of different things. The the um, the first bonus in this also with the enrich uh, well I see I I keep saying enrichment, but with the games that you can play with your dog definitely will help rein in a lot of that energy. So um, check out the book. Check out the first bonus you're going to get. And um, really, guys, when you, you whatever it is you're training with your dog. Um, I, you know what? Let me, before we go too, too much further, let me get to our, our timer because Give this, me just a second before we do that. I got a couple more far. questions. I want to try to get as many of these questions in okay. there again. Uh, Katrina uh, in the UK, um, yeah, I think there's going to be a countdown timer, guys. She's getting ready to start. So make sure if you're interested in this and you want to see the behavior changes in your dog and you want to enjoy time with your dog and you want to laugh and play and do all the things you're supposed to do with your dog, Believe me, 27 bucks is not a lot of money. Uh, Katrina is saying in the UK, I've been looking for a group on Facebook that understands that positive training is the way to go. I'm joining just to get access to your group. Thank you, Katrina. That's very cool. Uh, Mark is also saying he just joined and he's already got access to the... He's already got access. So this is automated, guys. So not us. We're live right now. But I'm just saying, as soon as you join, you're going to get immediate access. I mean, you don't have to wait. There is no waiting. You know, I know when, when I was younger, man, if you wanted to join a course, you know, it was like, oh, my God, you had to sign up. You'd get like a booklet in the mail, and then you had to look at the times and dates, and you had to drive down there, and you had to sit in the classroom, and then you had to drive back. Guys, it's so easy now. They solve your problems. They enjoy your life. You know, spend time, you know, with your dog and enjoying the time with the dog. Don't, don't go through all this hassle of, you know, and I see like PetSmart and all these places are having these courses and you got to go into the courses and there's a bunch of other dogs in there and it's just such a hassle. Uh, anyhow, uh, Elizabeth in Virginia Beach uh, says, I have three toy poodles and I have to stay with them when they go outside to keep them from constantly digging up my flowers in my flower beds. Guys, have your dogs ever dug up anything in your yard? Uh, <laughs> Uh, is this something that you cover in your course? Jessica, do you cover that? Elizabeth, I absolutely do cover this. And what I want to say is we don't, we don't want our kids, we don't want to stop our kids from walking, right? We want to stop them from walking into the street. And what I mean by that is as this relates to your dog, we don't want to stop our dog from being a dog. We just want to help focus their energy into a positive out and, and a positive outlet. So your dog naturally wants to dig. So we don't want to keep them from digging. We just want to show them how they can dig in a way that we can live with, in a way that we find appropriate in our family and in our household. So absolutely, the course can help you out with this and I um JR I did not change out this uh video so it is not going to play so guys I'm going to start a timer on my phone well, don't start it yet don't start, don't start, it, don't start it, yet. it yet don't start it yet oh, he's uh, going to make me answer, answer a lot Earl of here. questions yeah Earl gosh there's so much more stuff in there than the, here's the funny thing guys that you don't realize her course fixes problems and helps you in so many areas that you may not even realize is a problem. You know, like what she just said, you know, this dog that just jumps up on everybody when she got there. You know, these people didn't even know that was a problem. We're like, uh, by the way, your dog's jumping up on us. Oh, yeah, yeah, she does that with everybody. They, these people may not even realize that this is irritating and some of their friends quit coming over. <laughs> I mean, it's like, yeah. Uh, and Earl was asking about some stuff. And yes, Earl, there's so many things in there. Gosh, for nutrition alone, I would get this course. Uh, because, I mean, you know, we didn't always know all this stuff about nutrition. And since we've changed mm -hmm. this nutritional things, we've saved money not just on vet bills, but actually on feeding the animals. Because the stuff in the store is way overcharging you and is causing cancer and making your dog sick and all this. So definitely there's a lot more in there, Earl, that um, you, you're going to get use out of. Um, and I'm sorry if I'm not typing everything in here, guys. I'm, it's, it's hard for me to do that because I have yeah. so many questions. <laughs> um, but go ahead, go ahead and start your timer, I guess. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, guys, and I, I'm so this is live, so things happen, which you have already seen. So, 
Uh, my timer on the screen is not going to work, so well, can you just... I'm going to start a timer on my phone. Yeah, we're live on here, so yeah, okay. Yeah, right. I'm going to start a timer on my phone. And I'll let you know where we stand on the timer, guys. Don't worry about that. Yeah, so I'm going to start it at five minutes. Is that good for you? Do you think I can answer all these in five minutes? Or... Yeah, you'll be fine. Okay. Let me see here. Right. I want to get to as many as I can. Uh, Joy right, is go. saying, does the class address nervous piddling? What is piddling, Nervous Joy? piddling. Happens Meaning peeing? exciting or uh -huh. intimidated by other dogs. I'm not sure what piddling is. I do. So excited or um, fearful urination. So is that what that submissive. Is, Joy? Excited, is that in the excited and submissive urination I absolutely cover. And um, interestingly, excited and submissive urination, while they are caused by two different things, the solution, the way you work with your dog is the same. So I absolutely co cover this in the course. And I, it, you know, again, that's another one that can be embarrassing when you have guests come over. But, um, you know, definitely something to work with, with with your dog because it's not their fault. They're just reacting physically, unfortunately, to something emotional going on with them. Um, so definitely I, I do cover that in the course. Yeah, and uh, hang on one second. I'm just saying okay. goodbye to Earl. Earl, it's oh. great having you here, buddy. Thank you so um, much for being here, yeah, Earl. Great having you here. Uh, Joy is saying, does the $27 a month give me immediate access to all the courses at one time, or do they have to wait to get access? Joy, you will get access to everything up front immediately. Um, I know what you're what you're asking because there are some courses out there that like you only get the first module the first week and the second module the second week, but everything is unlocked for you right away. Okay, cool. Uh, Margaret from Winchester, Tennessee. I used to I used to live in Tennessee. I actually went to high school in Memphis, Tennessee. I like Tennessee. Yeah, Tennessee's pretty. We like we like Nashville. Anyhow, yes. uh, I got to tell you, I really love how you understand what dogs want and use that to your advantage. I really love that technique. Thank you so much for sharing. I just signed up for your course, and it is amazing what you have in this course. I can't believe there's areas in here that. Um, I didn't even know ex existed that well, we needed this stuff. Yeah, there is so much stuff in there, guys. It really is. Thank you so and much, 27 Margaret. bucks. I mean, eh, 27 bucks. Come on, guys. Yeah. We'll, we'll go out to lunch and spend $27. Unfortunately. Um, and Jessica is <laughs> actually, this course has taken years to put together. It has. And it is going back up to the 197 So you guys, it will the be. reason you're getting this for 27 bucks is because she's just really testing out her training right now online. The other training obviously has been tested for years on people. I do. I have been training in home for quite a while and for years and I have been building up my videos um, from these in home trainings so that I can show you online um, how how it actually works is you know where's our timer at right now i got to our timer there. right now is at oh there's two minutes left two minutes guys you all right two minutes if you want to have this course at this price at 27 bucks uh and not just this course it's tons of courses and all the bonuses it's 500 and some odd dollars worth of value for 27 dollars i mean that's pretty cheap uh, yeah we're doing this just as a test so go to the furryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll furryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll. And I know because, we're down. Well, I, just, I, yes. I, I want to ask you another question, oh, Jessica, before you okay. go. Tyrone in Kansas says um, he wants to play with his dog, but he doesn't always know what to do to play games with him. So he's signing up to get the fun and educational dog games. Oh, that's cool. Yay. And he likes the idea that he doesn't have to buy a bunch of toys that you actually show him how to use household items. Yes. Uh, you can use things he already has around the house. So he's just yes. done that. I love making and toys. And where are we at real quick, quick, We quick, are quick. at a minute seven. A minute seven, guys. You guys got a minute yes. seven at 27 bucks. Grab 500 and some odd dollars worth of training. It um, is. You know. It's an incredible deal. 27 bucks a month, really. There, no contract. Cancel at any time. But you will enjoy it. You will want to stay in. These people in. don't leave. They just, love it. Yeah. I mean, even if it's just to have access to me, which you do get. Um, through the Facebook what's group, the timer at right now, through Jessica? the help desk, 41 seconds. 41 seconds, guys. You have access to me. So at 27 bucks a month, think of even one thing that you want to resolve with your dog, 
and 27 bucks is absolutely worth it. Yeah, I know you know that. what? You meet a lot of cool people. Look at the people that were you on this do. call tonight. These are the kind of people in the group that I you know. can actually talk to. Thank you so much for being here with me tonight, too, guys. I really appreciate it. What's the timer it. at now? We are at 16 seconds. 16 seconds, guys. Okay, go to oh. furryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll. Jessica, what do you have to say to sign off? Oh, guys, go to the furryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll. I cannot wait to see you in the membership, in the course. I want to help you and your dogs. That is my ultimate goal. So there's my timer. But I, I want to help you. I want to help your dogs. And really, that's, that's, that's it. That's my goal in life is to help you and help your dogs. Um, so 27 bucks a month is is nothing compared Jessica, to what you, you could Jessica, you get five stars because piddling is pee. Piddling is pee, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Go to thefurryfamilycoach.com forward slash enroll while you can still get it at $27 a month. And I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Really, thank you so much for being here with me this evening. And, yeah. Earl saying thank you. Margaret thank saying you, thank Earl. you, Earl. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you. thank you so much, guys. All right. I'll see you guys inside the membership.